morning. Welcome to Grace Baptist Church to our Sunday School Hour. We certainly miss many of you who are normally here at this time. And uh, we welcome those who perhaps are watching for the first time. I've decided to record this lesson from home this week. So I'm glad that you joined along with us. You know, as the pandemic increases, and we pray that you are safe and well, living in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, these are difficult times, and it seems that new challenges arise each day. I just wanted to remind us all, remind myself, of Isaiah 26.3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. The key is to keep our minds stayed on God. Or, as we have been discussing in our lessons, to meditate on God's word throughout each day. I also want to invite you to our morning service, our morning worship service, which is available online at 11 a.m., at the same YouTube channel, our head pastor, Craig Hurley, will be preaching this morning. In a few minutes, we're going to get to our lesson for this morning. And I wanted to let you know that there is a downloadable lesson handout available. It's on our website, gbcministries.com, and it's under the News tab. Well, as we normally do each week in our Sunday School classes, we like to take time for prayer requests, and then take time to pray with one another. And I'd like to remind our members to please review the online prayer guide, which has updated prayer requests there. If you're watching with someone else, or if you're watching alone, would you please take some time now over the next few minutes here to pray for yourself and to pray for others. Remember that God loves you. Remember that God is all-powerful, all-knowing, that he is just, he is kind, and he is good. You may pause this video while you pray, then resume play when you're ready. Well, welcome back. It's so important for us to remember that the God of the Bible is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. He is all-wise in these times of our uncertainty, our weakness, and sometimes even our confusion. Remember to read your Bible every day this week. Remember to memorize and meditate on God's Word throughout the day and to talk to Him in prayer. So I've been teaching a series of lessons from a book by John Getch entitled, What's on Your Mind? Discover the Power of Biblical Thinking. Today we'll discuss chapter 8 entitled, The Closed Mind. There's a downloadable lesson handout available on our website, gbcministries.com. It's under the News tab. I trust you'll take advantage of that. In recent weeks, we've looked at uh, lessons that dealt with the complacent mind, a careless mind, and last week, a contaminated mind. The complacent mind, we looked at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, and Paul encourages Timothy to keep his mind steady on God's word by reading and meditating, preaching, and teaching the sound doctrine that is in God's word. Our memory verse for that week was Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And a couple weeks ago, we looked at the careless mind. Verses 14 and 15 of the same chapter were our text, and we were challenged to discipline our thoughts in the right direction so that we can live in the right results. Our main points were cultivating truth in our minds, purposefully 
presenting our minds with God's truth, the contemplation of truth, or consistently meditating on God's word, then the consumption of truth, consistently consuming truth and therefore changing our lives because of it. Our memory verse was Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Last week, we looked at the contaminated mind, verse 16. Take heed unto thyself and to the doctrines, continue them in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. We talked about the brain door and how a closed brain door will keep your vessel clean. We use that, that uh, garden hose to example what a what a dirty conduit can do to the clean water that flows through it. And thus, we need to be a clean conduit so God's pure word can flow through us uncontaminated and unhindered. Secondly, a closed brain door will keep the values centered, having biblical doctrine, being careful not to be deceived. And then lastly, a closed brain door will keep your voice Clear. By this we mean that our life then is showing forth that consistent with the Word of God by first thinking purely and then acting and speaking rightly. So today we're still in 1 Timothy chapter 4, but we're going back to the beginning of the chapter. We're going to look at the first eight verses today, and I'd like to start by reading these eight verses with you. So if you have your Bibles, if you go ahead and open to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly, in that later time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourish up in the word of faith and in the good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather into godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little. But Godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of life that now is, and of that which is to come. Today, we'll consider how important it is for to keep our minds closed to unrighteous thoughts as they have come to us through various diversions, demands, and deceptions. Number one, a closed mind guards against heretical, excuse me, heretical deceptions. Your blank is heretical. A closed mind guards against heretical deceptions. Letter A, warfare, the warfare of Satan. In verse one of this chapter, 1 Timothy chapter four, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and devils, doctrines of devils. You know, the devil never stops attacking. 2 Timothy chapter 3 
verses 13 and 14, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou, in the, which the things thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. The warfare of Satan. He never stops attacking. He's always, he's on a mission, and he won't stop. Let her be the weapon of Satan. Now, there's actually several here. I didn't give you blanks for all of these. Underneath the letter B, the blank is weapon, the weapon of Satan. But Satan has many weapons in his arsenal. Feel free to jot, jot these down on the side of your handout if you'd like. But he will use accusation. Scripture tells us in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Day and night. Our enemy, Satan, the devil is accusing you, accusing me as Christians before the throne of God day and night, as he did with Job, as we see in those opening chapters. He will also use opposition. Satan will use opposition, one of the weapons in his arsenal. 1 Peter 5 8, be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He'll use opposition. He is our, he is opposed to us as Christians. He is our adversary. And he seeks to devour me. He seeks to devour you. He will use opposition. He will also use imitation. This we see when the devil is tempting Christ in Matthew chapter 4, verse 9, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. You know, in this passage, the devil, though he is seemingly offering Jesus much, is actually offering him much less than God the Father intends for Jesus to have. This is the case with us. Though it seems that the worldly and fleshly pleasures will make us feel good, in the end of the day, they only bring pain, misery, and disappointment. On the other hand, the narrow road of God, though it seems a bit harder now, will only bring fullness of joy in the end. Satan's happiness is only a poor imitation of the true joy of God. Satan uses imitation in one of his weapons in his arsenal. He also uses deception. This might be Satan's number one weapon. Revelation 12, verse 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. You know, the devil loves deceiving people about the sins of this world, about immorality. He loves deceiving the world about drugs. He loves deceiving the world about alcohol. How these things might make someone feel good at the present. But just moments, hours, days later, sometimes weeks and years, the misery, the pain will always follow. He even deceives people about death. Many people think this about suicide, and they think they're going to end it all. But we know that's not true. Your soul will live somewhere forever. John Getch says, But he, the devil, saves his most sophisticated deceptions for the spiritual. And he echoes the thoughts of many people when, as John continues and says, quote, 
How could something that my church teaches or that my parents taught me or that so many people believe possibly be wrong? We know people in certain religions, in certain churches, when they're grown up there from a small child and taught how hard it is to convince them that the Bible is true if what they've learned is contrary. The devil will use deception. He is a master of deception. 2 Corinthians 11, 13, 15 says, For for such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into the angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work. You know, there are many false teachers today. And they teach all sorts of things contrary to God's word. But typically, they don't come right out and tell you, no, we don't believe the Bible. That's not true. This is the way we believe. Sometimes that may happen. Most people will take some of the truth of the Bible and mix in their beliefs or the error along with the truth. This is some of the most dangerous type of deception, is when the truth is mixed in with the error, making it more difficult to discern. Well, uh, John Getsch, our author of our series, uh, was an evangelist for years and years and still, uh, still goes out and preaches uh, Course. And he tells of a time where he was at a meeting and he was speaking with the pastor and the pastor was relaying to him that this young couple, a new converts in his, in his church had just come up to him and said, you know, somewhat excitedly that some Jehovah's Witnesses were coming over to their house and holding Bible studies with them every week. The pastor was just beside themselves because this new convert, they didn't know, husband and wife, they didn't know the errors of their ways and they were being deceptive in what they were teaching, the, the false teachers, the Jehovah's Witnesses, as they came. The pastor came to John and said, what do you think I, sh I should do? He said, why don't you ask the couple if they would be willing to invite you and I, the pastor and the evangelist, over to their house, about the same time where the Jehovah's Witness would come by. The couple agreed and invited them over. They pastor, the evangelist, showed up about 15 minutes early. Sure enough, right on schedule, uh, the Jehovah's Witness, two folk came in, knocked on the door. They came in and held the Bible study. They were introduced, not as preachers, but as friends. They went through. John relays this. He says, about after about an hour, I was getting weary of their deception. And so I asked the man, do you believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and that the only way to heaven is through him? The man replied, no, and then tried to explain. As soon as he said no, the young Christian jumped to his feet and he said, what? You don't believe that Jesus was God? What are you going to teach me if you don't even believe in my Savior? I'm sorry, but you're going to have to leave my house right now. I thought that was just, that was wonderful. Once he saw the truth, this new Christian, this new believer, saw the truth right out, he recognized it was no longer deceit. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, beginning verse 1, Beloved, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Behold, the false prophets are gone out into the world. Verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. 
We go read down through verses 3 and 4. In verse 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is he that is not of God heareth not us. Here we go. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The Bible tells us how we can discern between truth and error. Number two, a closed mind guards against hypocritical demands. So your blank is hypocritical. Number two, a closed mind guards against hypocritical demands. Letter A, the tendency to negate biblical principles. Your blank is negate. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created, to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know truth. You know, it is amazing what people will believe sometimes to find a solution for their sin problem. Yet, all the while ignoring the, the solution that God gives in his word. And I submit to you, a simple solution, humbling, yes, but a simple solution. Repent of your sin. Realize you're a sinner. Repent of your sin. Turn to Jesus. Accept his payment for you and receive him as your savior. A simple solution to our problem. You know, there's a man in the Philippines, you could look it up online. It's a man in the Philippines who allows himself to be crucified every year. <laughs> Granted, if he does it every year, he does not die. But he's, he's whipped. He's actually nailed. They put nails through his hand. He does this as, as thinking that he will pay for his sin, thinking that he is a good example to all of those around him. Kind of reminds me, reminds us of Naaman in the Old Testament after Elijah's messenger told him to wash in the Jordan and be healed of his leprosy. What was his initial reaction? He refused. Now, the water's dirty. We have much better waters at home to be washed in. 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 13 and 14, his servant says, My father, talking to Naaman, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it much rather than when he said to thee, Wash and be clean? Then he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan. And according to the saying of the man of God, his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. It is that simple, friend, to wash and believe. Be cleansed of your sin in the blood of Jesus Christ. Letter B, the time to nurture biblical principles. To nurture. Your blank is nurture. God nor his Holy Spirit will never tell his children to do something contrary to his written word. Someone says to you, God told me, or the Holy Spirit told me to, and they go on and they say something that's contrary to God's word. That is not of God. That is deception. That is heretical. John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you all things to come. Your Paul reminds the people of Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that they are not to be following him, but are always to be following after Christ and the truth of God's word. The Holy Spirit will always confirm through the word of God the truth that he's revealing in your heart. 
1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 13. But God revealeth them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man that is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God know we have re now we have received. Not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak. You know, we must guard our mind against the teaching that make demands that are not found in God's Word. God's Word tells us that Jesus Christ was crucified one time for all men. It does not tell us to crucify ourselves every year. We are to follow the Word of God. So important. Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him, and thou not unto his words, lest he repube, reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Ari Tori said, God's word is pure and sure. In spite of the devil, in spite of your fear, in spite of everything, end quote. God's word is pure, believe Number three, the closed mind guards against hopeless divisions. Your black is hopeless. God's word, I'm sorry, the closed mind guards against hopeless diversions. A guarding, A, guarding our minds from endless diversions. Endless is your blank. First Timothy, we're going to go down to verse seven now. But refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. John Getch says this, and it's a great quote. He says, quote, If it doesn't edify, eliminate. Let me say that again. If it doesn't edify, eliminate. Again, let's go back to chapter 1, 1 Timothy verse 4. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edification which is in faith. So do. Not fables, not endless genealogies which minister questions, no, but rather godly edifying which is in faith. Don't let the things of this world hold you back from the best that God has for you to do for him. Don't let the good things that you're involved with hold you back from the best that God has for you. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Letter B, our minds for eternity's destination. Our minds for eternity's destinations. Your blank is eternities. Have you ever asked yourself, what on my to-do list today will make it into eternity? It's not a bad question. I'm a good one for making lists, okay? I make to-do lists. Typically, I make my list for the week and then try to accomplish that throughout the week. What on my list that I've written down this week, that I wrote down today, what on my list, when accomplished, will actually make it into eternity? Acts 20, verses 22. And now, behold, I go bound into, in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, Say that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. None of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received, the Lord Jesus, 
to testify the gospel of the grace of God. That was Paul's to-do list. To testify the gospel of the grace of God. Number four, a closed mind guards against hindered diligence. Hindered, your blank is hindered. Hindered diligence. <clears throat> Letter A, God's exercise program. Your blank is exercise. First Timothy, you see it there. Um, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. So while physical exercise is good for the body, and we know that it is. They tell us it is. Your doctor has told you, get off the couch, take a walk, ride your bicycle. Bodily exercise is good. But this body is not going to last forever. Therefore, while it does profit, it only profits a little. So in contrast to that, Spiritual exercise profits for the life and for all eternity. Many of us have a bit more time on our hands now, these days. How are you spending that time? I know our schedules are different. In some respects, our responsibilities have gotten quite different. So you might have more time. You might be saying, no, I'm more busy than ever. I've heard a few people say that as well. But if you have the extra time, if you've made a new schedule, most of us have had to make a new schedule, what are you doing? Have you, have you given God a priority in your schedule? Have you set a time to read your Bible? Have you set a time to memorize or to remind yourself to think, to meditate on God's Word throughout? Do you read good Christian li literature? Are you listening to good quality, godly Christian music? Are you exercising your spiritual life so you are becoming a stronger Christian? Are you involved in God's exercise program? Letter B, emphasis proclaimed, God's emphasis proclaimed. It's amazing how disciplined we can be if it's about our exercise. Every day, boom, I'm out there. I'm on my bicycle. I'm on my treadmill. I'm at the health club. I'm on my run. I'm taking my walk. Whatever you do, and you won't miss it. Rain, shine, snow. I see people up and down all the time up and down my sidewalk, every single day, you can almost set your clock by it. They're disciplined. That's good. That's great. We can be really good about disciplining ourselves in things that in the long run, as we look down the road, they matter little. Bodily exercise. What about watching the news? Are you said, I've got to watch the news. You set your time. You set your meals around it. Gotta watch the news. I have to eat supper at 5 p.m. sharp. Whatever it is for you, you can be really disciplined. How about disciplining your spiritual life so you won't miss your Bible reading? You won't miss your time of prayer. Acts 24, 16 says, And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. I keep my conscience clear before God. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to be in the Word. I'm going to be in prayer. I'm going to be memorizing, meditating on God's Word. Number five, a closed mind guards against harmful departure. Your blank is harmful. Harmful. Letter A, your establishment of faithfulness. 
Paul shares his heart right away here at the beginning. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, he says, In later times some shall depart from the faith. Isn't that sad? Letter A, your blank is faithfulness. Your establishment of faithfulness. John Getch, in his study for this chapter, he says, quote, I wonder how many Christians would still be ministering if they had guarded their minds. You, you might say, hey, this, in some respects, this lesson sounds a lot from last week. Yeah, it does a little bit. Common theme, closed mind. Folks, this is important. Are you guarding your mind? Are you closing your mind? Are you being disciplined with what you allow into your mind? You don't want to end up, as we go through these several, these next three passages, like these people. You let things into your mind. Say, hey, I'm big enough. I can handle it. I've been saved for 37 years. Don't tell me I can't handle it. Okay, I'm not telling you. It's the Word of God that's telling you. You better be careful what you're allowing into your mind. You want to be sure that you're faithful to the very end, Christian. It's great to have a good start. It's great to have, but what about at the very end of our lives? Are we staying true to God? Are we being faithful to God now? 2 Timothy 4.10, the sad story. For Demas hath forsaken me. Revelation 2.4, thou hast left thy first love. 1 Timothy 5.15 For some are already turned aside after Satan. I don't want to end up as one of the unfaithful. And I know you don't either. But God asks us, in order to be faithful, you have to close your mind to the deception that the world gives. Harmful departures. Let her be your effect on the future. As the saying goes, no man is an island. Though man, though each man or woman may make decisions and live with those, those consequences, his decisions and his consequences will be shared by all those around him. Many of you know that I have many children. As a dad, the decisions that I make, they are felt. It is a, it is a trickle-down effect. It is a ripple effect. You cast the stone into the water, and it ripples. It continues. It goes on. It affects the whole lake. If my family were a lake, I make a decision, and I plop that stone into the pond, and the ripples is how it's affecting each one of my children and my wife. First Timothy 4.16, which we, again, looked at last week. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Yes, we may be surprised one day, and hopefully this is the case. We may be surprised one day in heaven, and we might be encouraged that how many people, because of my life, because of your life, were encouraged to trust Christ because of our testimony. Yet, will there be those who were discouraged from Christ because of me, because of you? Will there be someone in hell because of me, because of you? Sadly, Paul wrote to the church at Rome, Romans 2, 24, For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. Christian, I don't want that said of me, and I'm sure you don't want that said of you. We need to close our minds to deceit, to deception, to wrong thinking. He told the church of Corinth in 1 Corinthians 15, 34, Awake to righteousness and sin not, 
for some had not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. You could say, awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God in Birmingham. I speak this to your shame. What tragedy if we fail to keep wrong thoughts from our mind and as a result, someone misses heaven. The author of our series grew up on a farm. I'm going to give you one of his illustrations, okay? He grew up on a farm. And uh, he tells the story of baling hay all day. And then they got a call from a neighbor saying, hey, your cows are out. They were across the river in some rented pasture. Your cows are out and they're in my cornfields. They quick raced in the truck. There's a couple of miles. They had to drive around the river. They went as fast as they could. They got there. It was uh, John, his mom, and his dad. And they're running through the cornfields trying to corral the trying to corral the, 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 the cows. John, being just a young boy, he got stung by a bumblebee on his head, and at least he was just bawling. His mom ran home to get him some ice. His dad seemed like he was going all over the county trying to, trying to get the cows from everywhere. They chased the cows for an hour. In the process, our author, as I said, being just a child got stung by a bee. He recalls, this is what John says, he says, my dad was running cows down for seemingly all over the county. My mom was running back to get ice for my head. I was bawling my eyes out. And yes, John says, I was the one who left the gate open. People were frustrated. Cows were injured. Milk production was down for the next two days. And part of the harvest was lost because I didn't close. Perhaps you can visualize this, Christian. Three or four things, areas of damage because of one choice. He didn't close the gate to his... And so our parallel is our mind. Close the gate. Don't allow the deception. Know your Bible. Commit yourself to be diligent. Don't allow the distractions and the diversions in your life, but be disciplined. Get on God's exercise program. One of those things that we talked about is memorizing. So our verse for this week, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Well, that's all we have time for this morning. Thank you for watching. I trust God's word has been a help to you. Please tune in to Pastor Hurley's uh, morning worship service, Grace Baptist Church. In just a few minutes, 11 a.m. on the same YouTube channel. Once again, thanks very much for joining us. God bless you. Have a great day and a good week.